really great. This is the biggest game in the world right now. Winner takes all, the winner goes to the Olympics. You've got the home team in China. You've got an experienced team in Nigeria where players have been on a big stage and played. This is going to be outstanding and nobody at any time is gonna take their foot off the pedal. Well, the situation is relatively straightforward for Nigeria. A win, and they will take the spot ahead of Tunisia. A defeat, and Tunisia will take that Olympic spot. For China, a win will get them through, but there is a possibility that a smallish loss could get them through. It depends on how Iran get on. If Iran win and win big, then it won't be enough for China. And there is a scenario where at the uh, end of the evening here, they could be drawing lots to see which team goes to Tokyo. Hopefully it doesn't get to that because it'd be too much maths for me and uh, Coach Joe to work it all out. But basically these team teams are going out on court knowing win, and that takes everything out of the uh, equation. Can't be a better scenario. Win and you're in. No no situations that you're going to that's going to stop you from getting that win no excuses here you just got to go and win nigeria's juiced up because this place is packed china's juiced up because the place is packed and they're still coming in here in the guan chao arena it is already very very loud tickets hard to get hold of uh today and uh, they will be making as much noise as they can for the home team. And we will now rise for the national anthems of the two sides. And we will start with the national anthem of Nigeria. The national anthem of Nigeria. So, And now for the national anthem of China. Well, big roar for Yao Ming when he walked in the uh, building a little earlier today. They were chanting his name. They are pumped up for this game in Guangzhou. I think that's fair to say. It's going to get loud. It was pretty loud in here two nights ago for their first game against Korea. It's going to be even louder here today. If the Chinese team get the applause that Yao got stepping in this arena, they'll be just fine. One of the most influential people in the game's history. 
But you're going to see a Nigerian team right now that they've got some key players who've been on big stages and have handled big game situations, and they don't mind being on the road. And they'll make sure those are the guys that they'll be leaning on. These are our officials for this evening's game. Mike Wieland of Canada, Georgios Potsanidis of Greece, and Karsten Straub from Germany. And our commissioner is Andreas Papadopoulos of Greece. Teams going through their warm-ups. And yes, I mean, you kind of touched on it there. As we look at this Nigerian starting lineup, there is plenty of big game experience here. Absolutely. Huge big game experience. Josh Okogi being very young, but been in big games. But the chief, the leader of this team, uh, Al Farouk Amino. Amino has an Orlando Magic scoring nine points per game, scoring in every which way, but he's the veteran. He is the veteran that will lead this team and has to. He has to make sure that this team doesn't break. And they're, they're going to be challenged by a great China team. And of course, uh, the pressure on this Chinese team to make sure that they do book that Asian spot. They, they had hoped for better in this World Cup. Um, they didn't want to be in Guangzhou because they wanted to be in the second round games. But that's how it broke down for them. And these are the five who will start the game and try and get them off to a good start. Yeah, very important group here. What, you, what you're surprised is, is their leadership's on the floor all the time. And that goal has been very, very good for them. But Chow Rui here has, has been very big down the stretch. 16 points the other night against Korea. Clutch baskets, very good on defense. He scores off of their defense. He's doing a lot more than averaging six points per game. He's playing his best basketball right now. And they will need everybody to bring what they have to the floor here today. The fans bedecked in red and white, as you would expect. And, uh, well, they expect big things from that man as well, Yi Jian Lian. But they're going to bring him off the bench, it looks like, here tonight, which is an interesting move. It's an, it's an incredible move, because the other day they were down and in trouble and he came in with five minutes to go and just took over. And he did the same thing to start the last game. I guess Nigeria in this situation, they're going to have to, as the underdog, try and get off to a good start and try and just put a seed of doubt into this massive crowd's mind. Yeah, both these teams have to be very careful. They've, they've been playing real well, but they've all had lulls in their game. And it's a team that can stay away from those lulls and play consistent throughout is the team that's going to have the greatest advantage. Well, the last few words being spoken by Li Nan, the Chinese coach. Boy, they would love to come out to a fast start here. There's Alex Wara. The crowd counting down the final seconds of official warm-up time. And now there are 10 minutes on the clock. Nigeria out there and ready to go. A fast start for Nigeria is really important because of this crowd. If they can get this crowd to sit down and just have to watch the game, great. But if they get this, let this crowd into the game, then it becomes a little bit more difficult because the crowd is right on you. It is a loud venue, and they will work hard to help their China team. That they will. China now come out. Chao Chi, the last man out. What a performance he had two days ago in that victory over Korea. The fact that they took Yi out of the starting lineup and are even bigger now. This is a team full of length up front with China. Here we go then. The opening tip is not very clean, but Nigeria will get the first possession of the ball game. Down low it goes. The double team nowhere out. Did he go up and down? Yes, he did. Amino Alpha up with the turnover. Nigeria got what they wanted, post up Amino right off the bat, and then China's bigs collapsed immediately. 
and Amino was a little late getting the ball out. I'm sure brings it forward as China take their first offense of the game. Mong. It's a very different starting lineup for China here compared to the one from two nights ago. Driving through, no way through. Is it stolen back? No, it's not. Chance for Nigeria on the alley -oop! Beautiful fast break thrown down by Udo. Off their defense, this Nigerian team will run and their bench is deep. They want to play a 94-foot game. Wong. Feng Shu gets China onto the ball. Kogi driving in, dumps off the pass, and a little toss up there once again from Ekpe Odo puts Nigeria at 4 2 ahead. And Nigeria's going to look to score early in the clock in their primary break or secondary break. They're not going to run down the clock as much as China will. Wong spins one way, comes back the other, travel, travel, wave it off. The home fans were up on their feet, but he spanned one way, back the other, and you can't go back the first way as well. And Udo did a real nice job of pulling the chair on him. The fact that he was standing up on his dribbles, he lost his balance. Udo. Look for the handoff, gives it to Diogo, and uh, that comes out. Joshua Kogi is going to be a big part of this Nigeria team, but Fung did an absolutely great job of defending him on those last on that last series. Around the outside, it goes to Sun. Offered the screen from Wong. Sun driving baseline, kicks out. Bang for three. It's good. In for his defense, shows you on his offense, two big shots from him. Who's a nice little cross of driving to the hole. Fung there knocking it down. Trochi with the rebound. Nice dish inside all Wong just dropped it, able to recover. Wong again bringing it down low. And the turnover. Is Amino in transition, tough one off the glass. Udo trying to keep it alive. Udo gets it back. Oh, what a drive to the basket. Just couldn't quite rearrange it. And there was a foul on the head. And it will be two free throws. Yeah, an explosive drive on that. And the fact that he went to that reverse layup didn't allow Joe get an opportunity to block the shot. Here's a big three, second big shot for Fang tonight. But Okogi going to the basket like that was brilliant. Beautiful rotation on the ball. Home fans doing their best to uh, put the shooter off. He makes two of two. And they're going score for score here in the Guangzhou Gymnasium. China five, Nigeria six. Wong putting it on the floor to the spin. Beautiful move to the basket. Yeah, much better balance on that one. He stayed low. Good, strong move. Kept his eyes on the rim. Great finish. Mino now penetrates, dumps it off to Udo, kicks it out. Amino penetrating, off the mark. Good chance penetration by Nigeria, and China's defense is collapsing. They're going to dare Nigeria to shoot the ball from the outside. And Sun is blocked. Fung with the rebound, though, a bit too much zip on that pass, and Udo already snuck out. Cho Chi chasing him down, won't catch him up. He saw him coming all the way there and timed it that he knew he was going to be open. Song Min Hui. Wong. To Feng. 
Back round, it goes to Sun. Shot clock down to five. Trying to draw a foul and getting the whistle he was after. Yeah. Great screens by China is going to force Nigeria's bigs to have to play. Diogo didn't want to come out there, and you could just see it. His resort was, I had to foul. Fun. Pulls up at the elbow. Off the mark this time. But another confident jump shot. Good balance, good rotation, good shot. Amino, nice pass, and a big throw down! Super assist, and Okoye is there to jam it down. Wow, and they did that with minimal amount of movement. His first step to the basket, it was a backdoor cut, but he's incredibly quick, and then you can see what, what he can do when he gets the ball. Sun takes it to the rack, and cuts it to one midway through the first quarter. Yeah, great screen inside there, opened up the lane. Udo just keeping that alive. Yi Jian Liang getting ready to check in. Down low it goes. Rebound by Wong. And China doesn't want to get this tempo going too quick because they know how athletic this Nigerian team is. So Chi setting the screen. Sun penetrating out to Fang for the triple. He's in another one. China in front. So we were surprised he started, but they knew what he could deliver. That's an incredible start. Amino. Good help down from Sun to knock it loose. Sun going it alone, kicks it out. Fang sets his feet for a third triple. Oh, string, what a shot. And that started on defense with the dig down. And then they broke. 11 points already, and now a steal. It's kicked out to Wong, flushes it down. And Nigeria are going to call time, because China have opened up a seven-point lead. They're on their feet here in Guangzhou. It's China 17, Nigeria 10. Incredible steal here, good run out. Big man goes right down the middle. And they've done an absolutely great job. Fung's done a great job of digging down, made a straight one-on-one straight -on -one steal there. Kick out, hit the hot man, find him. That's taking your time. Yeah, I was just wondering, did he take too long? You know, because he checked his feet, he made sure his hair was in the right place. He took a long time. But when you're feeling it, you're feeling it, and he is feeling it right now, that's for sure. 11 points or four or five shots, three or three from behind the arc. Now, Nigeria's got to move the basketball. That's their advantage. If they can get China to move and not have to pack it in. And so Nigeria, the last game, they're doing the same thing right now. They're bringing five fresh substitutions in, getting everybody a feel of the game early and then play their best players throughout. That was a strategy yesterday, and it worked very well in the second half. But you got to be careful here now, because now you've got a team with some momentum in China, and you're bringing five fresh guys in and a smaller lineup. Well, you don't need me to tell you who's come into the game. It's echoing around the uh, arena here. Yin Jian Lian into the ball game for the first time. Here he is playing defense. Mina in the corner for three! Beautiful shot. This group on the court right now for Nigeria is going to try to space the floor and take advantage of driving lanes, and they will shoot the ball. And they will steal it here as well with Eric. And here's another triple going up, trying for back to backs. Long rebound comes out, well tipped down. Here comes Sun, three on two. Frank was open in the uh, corner, but the deflected pass did get him. Oh, a big shot from Choji off the back of the ring. It's a foul on the floor. 
Joji had that shot. He didn't think twice about it. No. But this is the matchup they wanted right there. They searched it out. They found it. Yi wanted the ball all along. And he gets it. Joji that's blocked away by Eric. It was right at the top of his arc, that one. McQuay draws the foul. That was an incredible block by Eric. Not only did he catch up to the play, but he just kept going up with it. It looked like at first uh, it might be a goaltend, but you can see right on that replay, right at the top of its arc. Michael Eric has done that in the two games that we've seen him here. Been a presence on the defensive end. McQuay to inbound. Nairobi. Is Eric going to work? Tough matchup down there, but he converts well. Yeah, good read inside. Nice left hand, high off the glass. Used his strength to bury the defender. He trying to get position. He's had to come all the way to the three-point line to get it to the runner. And is there a foul in there? Yes, there is. It's good off and set by China. They try to run a Spain action where they're back screening the ball screener, and, and that way they can get Yi an opportunity to isolate from the top of the key. He rejected it, wanted the ball. That's nice. That's two possessions in a row that he wanted the ball. One in the post, now one at the top of the key. Well, he's going to go to the free throw line now. Now the Chinese have matched the lineup now because with Yi, you can literally play four out, one in. And now they've matched Nigeria. Big roar. You know, it's, you know how important the game is when the crowd is roaring a free throw eight minutes into the game to make it a three-point game? It's going to be one of those games where every basket is memorable. Well, it's a packed house here, and they're making sure they are heard. Nice attack to the basket, it's forced to kick out. And they're two for three off the back of the iron, that hits the shot clock, having gone off the top of the board. And it will be possession to China. Nigeria is very fast and quick, but I think if they try to attack the basket without any ball movement, they're going to play into China's hand. It's almost a turnover. Ball is loose. Cho Chi in the right place. Oh, nice little fake off. And lay him for two. He's played a big part already, Sung Min Hui, but they quickly down the court. Eric trying to slam it in. And Cho Chi called for the foul. Well, great finish over there by China on the layup. Good roll. But you know a team's very good in transition when they can break on makes and they look to attack. And the nice thing here is they're coming back here. Clark follows this down because the worst thing that can happen is he makes the basket. All yeah. Clark uses is energy. Great follow by Clark. He's had one great defensive possession and now two very important offensive plays. Michael Eric misses the first free throw. All that does is inspire the crowd to be even louder to put him off. He's missed them both. Bang. Go under pressure, rims out. Nigeria has the ability to put pressure on the ball. 
Oh, stolen away. Trying to put in pressure on the ball. Jawui all the way to the basket. Doesn't get the drop, but it's off Nigeria last. So China get possession. China put pressure on the ball with size. Nigeria puts pressure on the ball with pressure into the player. A little stop and go. No good for Chow. Oh, Koyi almost forgot the ball. Namdi's hit, and that will go for three. Namdi Vincent in the corner. And this is how we started the last game for Nigeria. Came off the bench, gave them a spark. Real good shooter, and he's got the ability to drive. The Gaucho starts with some confidence. Looking to cut it to two. There's just over an offense left here in this first quarter. Remember, also important is the other game going on between Iran and Philippines. And Iran are leading by three. They're late in the first quarter. They're about a minute behind us. We'll keep tabs of that one in terms of where the Asian Olympic qualification spot will go. Batted down, shot clock at two, needs to go up here, it's knocked away, 0.8 of a second left for China. And that's Nigeria's strength, straight up man to man. If we don't give you, if they don't get, give up the middle, they're incredibly tough. Zim Wong. On the buzzer, doesn't get it off. A three-quarter court. He wasn't that far away. And that is the end of a very entertaining opening quarter. And the home fans look up at the scoreboard. They're feeling OK right now, feeling happy. China leads Nigeria 21 points to 19 here in Guangzhou. Basketball is a game of runs. Here we got Nigeria shooting 50%, but China knocking down 75 from the threes, those big shots, the big open shots, and Fine did a great job, and they did a great job of finding them. But if the game's a game of runs. China had that big one early, and Nigeria's run started with defense. And with the block shots, running in transition, filling the lanes. If they can fill the lanes with more than three people and they can bring their fourth and then they got a chance at a, at a rebound but fang every shot he's taken has been a big balanced jump shot and there's the spin move after a travel earlier wong does a great job on the spin move and that's another run out for nigeria the big man can run the floor Well, the latest from the two second round games, or well, one of them hasn't started, sorry, it's only 20 past eight. Spain, Serbia starts at half past eight local time. But the latest from the other game is Poland 14, Argentina 25. Uh, those two teams top that group, so it's about order uh, that they go through. They're early in the second quarter here, there, and they're at the end of the first uh, almost um, in Group N, where Iran lead Philippines 25-24. There's one uh, play left in that first quarter. And don't forget, you can keep up with all of the information you need about the FIBA Basketball World Cup through the official app. You've got the live stats going through, highlights, post-match interviews, everything you could possibly need. We got a lot of big names out here that we all knew. But Fung in that first quarter was sensational, and Michael Eric was very good for Nigeria. Go back to Wong. Off the back of the iron. Go gets the rebound. Wong again at the free throw line. He wants it down low, gets it. Squares up. Now he backs him down. Shot clock getting low as he goes to the fall away, tough one. Yi Jianlian makes it, China by four. Big time move. And that started with 
two guys having to, to try to box out Yia at the basket and China got an offensive rebound because of it. Eric driving hard, using his strength, but not finishing it off. And Yee with the rebound. Little step back. Yi going after the rebound, but good work there from uh, Metu Chemezi to keep it in Nigerian possession. Out of bounds. Well, the Chinese quick to protest, but uh, referee Whalen confident he's got that one right. Well, Koye there on that baseline drive didn't look to score. He saw trouble and he's looking for the pass off. That's where Michael Eric's got to step up and be at the rim for him. Well, the home fans saw that replay that you saw, and uh, they weren't overly convinced. Oh, nice move from Eric to the basket, finger roll. Good look, look off, lulled them to sleep. And again, they've got to jump out to him, having uh, seen him hit those three threes early on, and then he can put the ball on the floor. Go Island. To E. Crowd paying at him to go. He does go! Oh, it's blocked! One with the head fake and he had his arm pulled away. Yeah, it's a great ISO by E. But he's doing it off of no movement. So therefore, Nigerian players can come down and help on with him, dig down. Pong Jolin at the free throw line. He's uh, eight of 11 from this distance so far in the four games he's played in this tournament. He's had a very strong first half so far. Scoring in the post, getting putbacks, running the lane. Well, he's played over nine minutes of action. Only uh, Feng Shui has been on the court for longer. So now Nigeria's up to 11 players played with Zana entering the court. Oh, it's a little too low for Zana there to get down to that. Go. Gets it back. Here's E. Driving along the baseline. Ooh, you've got to be careful with that. Got to be careful with that. Once you fouled him and the whistle goes, can't hang on like that. Yeah, it's real tough when you're playing Yi as a post player out there because he's so quick and he's on, on his face up moves he's got a, he's got a great first step both teams making changes in fact china is going to make a second as you can see there Cho chi returns to the fray wong getting a good round of applause as he sits down five points Oh, that's not an easy pass for the big man to hang on to. They still keep possession. Shot clock late. Got to go up here. Tough shot on the shot clock buzzer. Ooh, Udo eventually bobbles it into his arms. That was great on-ball defense by Namdi Vincent. Koye driving baseline. Good finish. Or oh, Koye strong going to the hoop. The remarkable thing, that's his first field goal. He's been on fire from the three-point area. Again, China late in the shot clock here. 
Fans trying to count it down. He's got himself in all sorts of problems there. Duck Go doesn't get that off in time. They're just a little hesitant to go at times, aren't they? Yeah, and this is the problem. They're handling the ball too much. Uzo and Namdi Vincent have got them starting their offense so far away from the three-point line that they're playing with a short clock all the time. Ooh, that wasn't a great pass. Almost stolen away by Trochi Wei. Trying to split through the double team. It's turned over. Cho, oh, they give it right back. He's all over the place. What are they called? A holding foul. Holding foul. They did. Rochi Wei has come into the game to play some defense here on these two sets. And he does a good job of going in there with two hands. I always said if you go in with two hands, it's tough for an official to call it because you look like you're under total control. Six. 39 left in the first half. China 24, Nigeria 23. Uzo gets into the lane. A little too close there from a Chinese perspective. That Nigerian second unit did a real good job of getting Nigeria back in this game. Yi Jian Lian driving baseline. Comes back the other way. Finds a little bit of room. I think Udo's caught him on the arm there. And he generally am will go to the line. Yeah. He knows when he's when Udo's guarding him, he's got the advantage if he faces up. Backing Udo down is tough because he's got a real good base. But he knows if I can face him up, I can beat him one on one. He got a little shimmy there when he shoots yeah. that free throw. He makes the second. Tied at 25. Little zone pressure. And China's done this this tournament. They go 3 2 here. And the key part is you got to swing the ball to the corners. Or do that. Yes. But when they run that 3-2 zone, their big guys are attached inside. They don't want to come out. Diogo, from the elbow, puts Nigeria back in front. He wants it down low as well. Squares up to Diogo. Now he's backing him down. The double comes. Well, little rush of blood to the head, I think, there from uh, Cho Chi Wei. The difference between facing up and backing down, backing down, you allow a double to come because you can't see it. Facing up, you can see everything coming your way, so the pass is so much easier. Diego throws it away. Out in front to Cho Chi Wei. Chi putting it on the floor and running his man down for a charging foul. Well, Kogi got on there, he started ball pressure, came off that, and just with his quickness got to the spot. Put his body on the line there, because obviously the massive height differential means he's right at sort of elbow forearm height. And if you're getting in there taking a charge, it could be... Uh, it could be painful because he stands at 193 versus a guy 216. That's a lot of difference right there, 25 centimeters. But for most big men, their kryptonite is when somebody gets into your space, all of a sudden now you're playing standing up, and it's tough for you to beat somebody. 
Deflected loose, is still in play. Tapped away from uh, Amino. Fang comes up with it. He in transition. Nigeria have got back well. Sun. Into Yi. Gets, look at that, he's quadruple teamed and they squeeze the ball away from him. Both these teams are collapsing everything in the paint. And no one's taking advantage of it in this quarter of kicking the ball out and keeping it moving. Wong back in the game. Yi Jian Lian sitting down. Looks like the zone again. Who's up? Diogu. Long boxing. Well, doing enough to keep that away from uh, Udo. Fun. Sun. Fung all the way to the basket. It was like they were expecting him to pass, and he just went to the hole. Yeah, I think Udo got caught there second-guessing. Trying to get that into... Oh, Amina's there to clean it up. Yeah, it very was originally intended for Udo. Very fortunate on that there. Nigeria's just very slow with the ball, not making the zone move at all. China will stay in it and just get bigger and bigger with it. Oh, somehow he's lost the ball underneath there. Jai. Looked like an easy one. He got it's all the fake. Makogi going all the way to the hole. Just a change of pace and he lays it in. And China are gonna call for time here. Coach Li Nam wants to talk it over with his side trailing by four with just over three to play. Well, Josh Okogi has showed us he has a great first step and a great change of pace step. But Nigeria has, they need to score in transition or move the basketball. They can't have guys out there hunting their shot. Well, midway through the second quarter, Iran lead the Philippines by eight. Remember, if China were to not win this game, uh, then Iran would have uh, the opportunity to take that last or that uh, one spot directly into the Olympics from the Asian Federation. Uh, but they would need a 16 point swing in order to do that. And as it is now, there's nine in Iran, 42 33, and there's four here. So it's going in the general direction of Iran right now, but of course in a four-point game and and, and a half and some plenty to play. I love it. When Yao Ming speaks, people listen. Uh, he's been on that, he's been on the bench and last game against Korea, he had something to say late in that game. And someone heard him. Here come China with Fan. Sun. Oh, he's lost the dribble. He's managed to get it back. Fang has it late in the shot clock again. Open shooter in the corner, Jai. And China needs Jai to get on the board. He's been very good for them this tournament. Kogi driving down the lane, gets it to Amino. Not quite enough on that one. And Wong wins the battle of the board. Yeah, finger roll near the rim is going to be tough today. Out of bounds, Nigeria ball. Not sure he entirely wanted it there, Andrew Fei. 
Yeah, Jen just didn't have real good court awareness. And one of the things that's getting China in trouble a little bit is their spacing. Guys are getting caught in, in where guards are trying to drive, bringing extra help. Well, I think Amina is still debating the uh, non-call, should we say, at the other end of the floor. It's not going to change now. And the Vincent along the baseline off the glass. Nigeria are up six now with just over two to play in the first half. He's been a very good scorer out of the corner, shooting the three and driving baseline. It's a tough catch in there uh, for Wong. He's had to work hard, and he will go to the free throw line for two. The one thing China cannot do they cannot be spectators when the ball goes inside because Nigeria is just collapsing. If guys get into their shooting spots, it's going to be a kick out, one more pass for an open three. And that's the counter when three people collapse on you. Wong Jialin is up to six personal points now. Well, I always think two minutes either side of half time really important if you can get yourself a little run to take some momentum into the locker room or out of it it can really shift the way the game is going can either of these two teams string that together in this last hundred seconds or so metu there to score for nigeria and namdi bought him time namdi attacked the, the key there bought him time on that Turned down the shot twice. Little lob up there, didn't quite have enough on it from uh, Zhao. Metsu putting it on the floor, knocked away by Zhao Rui. Ran on the trail, dumps it. Ah, just go up, go up yourself. Zhao was ready for the rebound just in case. Yeah, and, and that would have been a nice play for Jen because he needed his confidence to be picked up a little bit on that. Nigeria up six, Okoye along the baseline. This would be big if it goes, it doesn't. Zana trying to keep it alive. Goyalan is just caught there, a little reach in. And that started with Go on the defensive end. Great box out in there on Zana and started that break. Well, as the substitutions made, which is uh, Sun Min Kui back into the game, Go Alun at the free throw line, looking for his first point of the contest. And it's notable that in the two wins they've had, he's had a sizable contribution, 16 points and 17 points. He scored in the two wins. Yeah, he's very good at attacking the basket. And then he's very good at stopping and finding people on the perimeter. Well, a stop and a score would be really good for the Chinese here. The defense is cranked up. Metu has some space, drives hard, can't convert, ball is loose. Second chance opportunity is taken quick. Rims out, Wong with the rebound. Shot clock switched off. China can cut it to a one-shot game going into the half. It's 
got to go up now. No time for one more pass, is there? No. Too late from Go Island. And that is it. At the end of the first half, China started well, but Nigeria responded, and it's been very tight in this ball game. At the break, it is China 31, Nigeria 35. That last minute showed a little nerves and energy going there. Look at Nigeria at the two points, moving the basketball, getting their drives to the basket. And China scoring well from the three, still early in the game. Rebounds are pretty even. A lot of those are defensive rebounds. But Nigeria's doing a better job of, uh, with their assists and points in the paint. 22. There's a big difference there. 22 of their 35 coming from inside the painted area. Fong with those early 11 points leads all scorers with 13. But you can see six, the joint top scorers for Nigeria. They've spread it around a bit. And they've played all 11 players. And so that, they've done that last game. And they're, and will they'll come out in the second half. If they stay the course of what they were doing, they'll just play their best players. This is a tough shot. That's a tough shot. Use that little step to get get some distance and space off it, but his head never moved. Well, this is what Nigeria have been doing so well in this first half, finding the gaps, getting to the basket, making the close range shots, and they'll want more of the same uh, in the third quarter. We'll leave you with these highlights. Joe and I will take a little pause. We'll be back with you in about 11 minutes' time.
inside the Fortman. It's the Dennis Schroeder show. We all have a ticket to it. Liz kicks it out. Vargas and it throws it down. Give him the poster. Flex on him, young man. Flex on them. Wow. Vargas. A box office blow from Barnes. It is a good change of direction. Trying to keep him on the sideline. Cuts back to the middle. No help. Dunk. Colt loses Patty Mills. Fast break opportunity behind the back. Line up and in and one. What a play from the Aussies. Trying to go up himself. Goes right in. Oh my goodness! What a throw down by Vincent Poirier! Wow! I almost fell off our commentary position for that one. That was unbelievable athleticism from the big man. My parents gave me away, so I had no purpose in this life. Yeah. When you educate a woman, you educate a nation. It's a quote from Nelson Mandela, by the way.
Welcome back to Guangzhou. Uh, the crowd have been enjoying themselves at halftime. The mascot's been round, leading the wave, getting them pumped up if they can get any more pumped up. But some work for their team to do, trailing by four. Remember, if they win, they will ensure themselves uh, a ticket to the 2020 Olympics. The uh, alternative was if they lose, the, there's a basket difference situation going on. But that looks like it might not be an issue because Iran is 14 points up at half time. And if Iran gets to 15, that's going to be uh, probably enough, 16 definitely enough. Um, to ensure that it's the Iranians who get that ticket. So China have got to go out and win this half. Yeah, China's not worried about that. They'll leave that up to the actuaries to figure all that stuff out. But China just thinking they've got to come back and get this half in basketball. And they've got to keep possession of the ball and not turn it over. They've had, a, they've had a 11 turnovers, but four of them were shot clock violations. And because they want to slow the game down and play in the half court, sometimes they're getting caught waiting too long into the shot clock and being forced to either rush a shot or eat the ball. And you see them walking out there in Nigeria. They look like it's just another, you know, scrimmage game or something. Look very calm, very relaxed. And I think from their perspective, if they can stay in front or keep this game close down to the last couple of minutes, what it'll do is it'll rank up, uh, ratchet up the tension in the building and that might affect China. Yeah, and they've been, but China's been playing in intense games all along here. Well, Nigeria get us underway here in the second half. Neither team led by more than seven. 17-10 and 27-33, the two biggest leads as Uda gets us off with the first score of the second half, which gives Nigeria a six-point lead. Dribble weaves a good idea to start it because they're forcing movement. The Jianlian starts up the second half with a three, and that's what they wanted to see here. And with his size, you can't have a guard close out and affect his shot. Kogi and Uza sort of getting in each other's way there. Oh, but Uza cutting to the basket. He chased him down. I don't think he blocked it, but he certainly made it hard. Sun, down to Wong. Back to Sun. Thought about the three, put it on the floor instead. Kicked it out, did well to catch that there. Here's E. E to the turnaround, fall away, and he's come out with five quick ones to... Uh, Cut this to a one-point game. You want to go to the Olympics, play through your best player. And it is E.J. Lian, which echoes around the Guangzhou Gymnasium. Udo calms them down. With a two and one to come. And it's a very pedestrian attack. The nice thing, nice thing about Aminu's game is he never looks like he's rushed. No. Always comfortable. Never lets the moment get him too high. And good defense on that, forcing a tough shot. To silence the crowd there in an instant as that ball dropped in. Son gets in deep, gets uh, it to one, and he's fouled. Good head fake in the first place. Yeah, and it's one of the few times where the Chinese guards have been able to get low into the paint, balance and control, and spot out an open player. Wong Zhe Lin at the free throw line. Abdul Salam in for the first time. He's not seen much court time at all in this uh, tournament. He's got the reputation of being a shooter and can score in bunches. Well, he's only taken one shot. 
at the uh, FIFA Basketball World Cup. He didn't make it. What can we see from him now? Here's a Kogi driving along the baseline. Tough one. Had to rearrange to finish that. His son and his eyes lit up as he saw the basket there ahead of him. Whoa. He's just bounced the ball and it's landed on the referee's head. And the referee's realized it wasn't deliberate. But you've got to be careful with stuff like that. Yeah, tough turnover. He saw the rim. He knew if he got it quickly and could attack the basket, he might have a shot at a layup. Uzo. Yogo. Uzo now driving, gets to the basket. There's a foul on that rebound as uh, Ekpe Udo tried to jam it in. Yeah, Diogo's getting the ball. He's got an advantage on size, but he's determined he's going to stay on that perimeter. With the fact that... Cho Chi coming in for Wong Shirlin. And the fact that China's playing three guards. And Nigeria is actually bigger at that wing spot because they can play Aminu in that post or Diago. Both good. Nigeria now move to what equals the highest lead of the game at seven. Little one two two trap after pressure. Sun gets it to Cho Chi. Three of them go out and none of them can stop him. Too much needed points for the Chinese. Good dish off, good catch, good finish. Yogu. Again, that's not the best shot option because there's nobody for a rebound if it doesn't go in. It's early in the shot clock, too. Yi Jian Lian putting it on the floor, driving hard, running to the basket, dropping it in for two. It's down to three. Yi loves that matchup. Udo. Amino. Spins baseline. Good feed off to Odo. Sun gets very close in, a little too hard off the glass. Probably needed to stop a foot or two earlier and that might have gone in. Aminu driving down the lane! A monster jam! He just saw this from the halfway line. He went, I'm going. And I said he doesn't get excited. Look at that. And that's part of his, his, he says it's a very slow dribble, change of pace. And then all of a sudden, bang. It didn't give Yi a chance to react to him. He enjoyed that. And once again, Nigeria's lead is up to seven. What Nigeria's done a good job is not give China second chance opportunities. Just three second chance points for China in this ball game from their five offensive rebounds. In fact, there's only been nine offensive rebounds between either team very much one and done here and and one of the differences nigeria has the ability and has shown us early in the game that they'll go on makes they don't have to just they're going to go they're, they're going to run the floor and attack this basket where they can and playing 11 guys having nine guys hit the score sheet they're committed to making this a full court game whenever they can. And here after the made basket and timeout, first thing they do is put a little bit of pressure on the ball. Hey. 
Cho Chi. Yi Zhen Lian, top of the key. All string. It didn't quite look like they were going anywhere there, the Chinese, but the big fella made sure the points were on the board. Yeah, they ran some choreographed movement there, but would have finished earlier in the clock. Get the ball to Yi. Rogobu throws it inside. Udo with the hook short. Yi Zhen Lian with the rebound. Of course, we spent a lot of time talking about China and Nigeria. Tunisia will be watching this with great interest because if... Well, here he is. We were wondering how the shot might go up. Because if uh, China win, then Tunisia get the uh, ticket from FIBA Africa to the uh, Olympics next summer. And you love when you notice a shooter on the floor. You're saying Abdul Salam didn't, was only taken one shot, or only made one shot. And taken. Taken one, but he's got a shooter's mentality. He was looking for that touch, and he was going to let it go, and that won't stop him from the next one. Arobo, Otometu, trying to feed it through. Still, they have it, Nigeria. Namdi Vincent fires up for three. Long arms of Cho Chi pull that one in. Peng Shou. Yi wants it, comes out to the three-point line virtually to get it. Oh, great head fake! Yi Jian Lian! Gets the crowd to their feet once more. He is so difficult to guard when he faces up because most guys from Nigeria guard him are forwards. Stepped out of bounds, trying to get the ball back. Just textbook. Look. Yeah. It's amazing. The volume of his... Uh, Name echoing around the arena. And while we were looking at that replay, you can see it's been explained to the coach. Namdi Vincent getting a technical warning for flopping on the shot. Chachi Wee under pressure from Namdi Vincent. Here's Yi Jen Lian. Oh, it's stolen away. Eric's diving down the lane. It doesn't go that way. It comes back to Namdi Vincent, head fake. In the corner, Hirohugbu, not quite. Namdi hits the three, though. Wow, but this team is so tough to guard when they do that. When they move the basketball and they space the floor, long rebound, second chance opportunity. This second unit for Nigeria did it in the second quarter, and doing it again here. I'm sorry, in the first quarter. Offensive foul court in the lane. I think it's Cho Chi. But look where he is. He's caught at the free throw line. This entire offense, there wasn't one Chinese player below the free throw line. And that's because of Nigeria's ability to not allow them to get the ball below that. Putting pressure on the ball and putting pressure on the wings his fourth personal foul. We're not going to see him for a while. The way Wong played in that first half, they've got a very good substitution ready. Out of bounds, Nigeria ball. Metu remembers what Lee what Yi did to him down the southern end here, and he was looking for the same breakdown. Metu, oh! Did you see that? Metu throws it down. Wow.
Go Island to the spin. Offensive foul, the call. And check out two players. Namdi gets a warning for flopping. He now steps in and takes the charge. Metu gets beat by Yi at one end. Is determined that he's going to come back and show you his stuff. And show you his stuff. He did! And it's big stuff. Well, momentum with the Nigerians right now. Leading by eight. Less than 13 to play. Chochi on four. Great defense. Kept his hands on the ball the whole time there, Fang Shu. He set in the screen. Gets the behind the back. Takes the three. Makes the three! He's getting in that zone right now where all you can do is maybe deny him the basketball. Stolen away. Here's Yi driving baseline, dumps it off. Abu Salam lays it in. It's a three point game. Coach Nawara wants to talk it over. Great job by Chan on both ends. Yi busting out. Yeah, he's got so much length there. No matter who closes out, he's still going to get a shot off. And Abdul Salam runs the lane on offense. A couple times, not the first time he's been rewarded, but he runs the lane like nobody else on this team. How many threes? I just want to know how many threes can he shoot? He can shoot. So don't, if, he, if you play early defense, don't let him get the ball. That will not happen. Listen, Christ Michael right here, you take the ball off. All right? Take it off full court. Make sure we start. You can need help. Come back and help. Everybody got well, it. This is what they're talking about. Right, he can shoot, by the way. So you need to stop him getting the ball. That's what they're talking about. Because actually, when he gets the ball, he can put it on the floor, too. So you've got to keep it out of his hands. All great shooters are the same. They're easier to guard when they don't have the basketball. But in Yi's case, you can close up tight. He just got so much size that he can shoot over everybody. Oh, you get the feeling if China are going to do it, he's going to have to try and carry them home. He has 19 points and is the game's leading scorer. And you heard in that timeout, Coach Nawara was very clear and Coach Burleson was in there to help him a little bit. Little full court pressure here from Go Island on Hirogbu. Okoye. Metu driving through, finds some space, doesn't convert, gets his own rebound, still has it, and is able to turn it into two. Good hustle. Boy, he, he was quick off that second jump to get his rebound. Oh, thrown away. Miscommunication. Tough turnover because what... Go and Abdul Salam do, do is they get to the corner and because they can shoot the ball, they space the team out. So all of a sudden now when China's rolling, it's tougher for Nigeria to rotate. Well, Yi Jian Lian's going to get the last 134 of this third quarter off here. But I'm sure that's just to regroup, get some energy for the big fourth quarter push. Iran lead by 19, so China cannot afford to lose. Iran at the top just strokes it. That's a tough shot. Decent defense. Tunisian fans watching will be cheering the Chinese for a comeback here to try and snatch that spot away from Nigeria. Go off the mark.
No. China with a chance to break here, four on two. Feng Shu, offensive foul, the call. I think it's uh, Irohobo who's on the floor taking that charge. And that was, that was easy. He looked like a rhino coming down the court there. That was crash and pass situation. Ooh. Go sits down. Louis Child sits, comes in. Yao Ming watching from right behind the bench. Can his team find a way back in? They keep getting close, and then Nigeria pull away to six or seven once again. Could it be ten? Yes, it could! All string! Nigeria with a quarter and some change to go. Have a double-figure lead. Iro Egbu with two confident threes. Well, they can't run it all the way to the end. Well, they might be able to now because there's a foul there. Not over the limit, so the shot clock will switch off and China have 12.7 to find a score. And then they have 10 minutes to find a run. Fang Shuo. Down to Wang. And he's fouled on the floor. And that's still not over the... Oh, what'd he call? Namby for the technical oh, okay. on that second flop. <laughs> yeah, the fans weren't happy about it. Let's have a look. The problem is he's had a warning already. Yeah, but the problem is he's standing on defense. Offensive players running through him. I think the coach just got a warning, did he, for a technical? But it'll be Feng Shui at the free throw line. For the technical free throw, which he'll make. Now, unfortunately, some players like Namdi are real good at making the read and getting to a spot. It might be a situation where if he didn't get the warning, then he may have gotten the charge there. Yeah. The other thing is, I'm not sure. I think it was his second one that he got the warning from. So if you referee keeps seeing you on the ground. Anyway, 4.6. He's back in for a play here. He's got the spot, but it goes out to Fang Shu. He drives in and he loses it. And there's still a Chinese ball. Referee on the side has given it to them. So there's 1.3. Surprised they're not subbing any Wong in the game here. Oh, good pass. Block from behind. Great play. It looked like a layup, but Akogi denied him. And the Chinese have work to do. Through three quarters, it's Nigeria on top. End of the third. China 51, Nigeria 60. Team Nigeria has made some of the greatest athletic plays in this half, and they're doing a real good job still of shooting the twos. They haven't shot many threes, but boy, they're showing their athleticism. Monster dunks, great chase down, pin downs. They've managed to get to the uh, basket consistently throughout the game. And, and the other thing is, every time China's, China's made a run at them, Nigeria have responded in one way or another with a big play a momentum shifting play whether that's a dunk whether that's a three whether it's a defensive momentum shifting play they've managed to every time china's got it down to a shot or so pull it straight back out to seven eight and as it is nine now and it's been different players hero egbu comes down knocks down two threes i don't know if they were great shots but he was confident he's knocking them down metu's take to the basket after Yi goes past him. Well, 11 guys have taken the floor for Nigeria. 10 of them have scored. None as emphatically as that. Is that a Nigerian poster? Yeah, it is. And that's, as a coach, just tremendous to see. All of your top scorer has 13. 
10 different guys on the score sheet. It's so hard uh, for the other team to defend you if you can get all of those different guys contributing like that. As a coach, you love to see when everybody's got a crooked number up there in all the categories. It's just telling you that you're getting incredible contributions and different guys will be able to step up at the main time. This idea of a second unit for Coach Nawara has been very good. Tells you about the Nigerian depth. Well, one of these teams is going to have an Olympic guaranteed berth at the end of this game. As it stands, we tend to play. That team is Nigeria. Lobbed into E. Jen Lian, and he finishes. He had the size mismatch, took the contact, laid it in. And good recognition getting that ball in real quick. The only hope Okoye has on that is that he's got to jam up Yi higher up so he can't get sealed. 21 now for the number 11. Lee was two passes ahead of everybody on that. He recognized the switch, know that he could bury the little guy inside. Little guy. Koye's a great athlete, but with Yi, everybody's little. Oh, he's missed the three-point play. Ooh, Cho Chi's got to be careful there. If that's a foul, Yi Jian Lian's put his hands up, but I think the referee signaled 15 to the table. It is, and he rolled the dice at the start of the fourth quarter here, Li Nan. And it's not paid off for him because Cho Chi has fouled out of the ball game with 9.57 to go, and there's a bit of a stunned silence here. You've got to play differently with four. You have to play differently with four. You can still play and contribute, but there's a risk and reward on that, and that was just a bad Too decision. Risky. Oh, stolen away. It is going to be a China ball off of Kogi Lass as the referee. And Nigeria fell asleep there a little bit. Two guys were working. The other two guys were down the court, not visible. That was very close, by the way. It was on his arm, and Akogi seemed to bat it off the arm, which is how China got it. It'll be over on the near side here. They're lined up on the baseline, but it should be on the sideline. Well, good surprise defense by China on that attacking Nigeria. Go. Trying to bounce it to uh, Wong. Again, Nigeria come up with an important defensive play. And a Kobe covering down on that. He can't guard if the ball's up in the air, but he can if you put it on the ground. Kogi. Shot clock down to five. He penetrates. He's off the mark. Ball is loose. Trying to have it. Bodies on the floor. They've got numbers here. Five on two. E. Jen Lian goes up for the jam and he's fouled. It's not a bad foul, that five on two. No, not at all. But that's real good defense there by China and a great run out. Good five man run out. Yi Jian Lian. At the free throw line, crowd shushing themselves. Almost feel like we've got to whisper now. Oh, he's missed it again. Three of six now from the free throw line. Nigeria a little bit more ready right now against a little bit of pressure from China. Uzo. Big shot. In and out. Wasn't too far away either. 
Uh, Wu Liang with the rebound. China back in a 2-3 zone there. And Nigeria just got the ball around the horn. Fang from the elbow cuts it to four. That's how he started the game. Great lift on a balanced jumper. And this is where Nigeria have responded all through the game. Can they do it again? Yes, they can with a Kogi on the baseline. Okoye well, has been shooting 75% from the three, created a closeout and tacked the basket. Nijan Lian. Wong trying to get there, he got pushed first. Boy, he just ran hard along the baseline. Big stuff. Seen some big dunks from this Nigerian team this evening. There's no question China's going to try to play through Yi this entire quarter. And one of the things about putting the ball in the post is if you put pressure on the ball, that post entry becomes a lot tougher. Jaoui, back out to Yijian Lian, leaves his man on the floor and throws it down. Now we've got a Chinese poster. Amino. Stolen away. Yi's running. It's well read. They still have it though, China. Fang Shu in the corner for three. It's off the mark. Miles off the mark. You could see when it left his hand, it wasn't going in. Amino drives in out to Akogi. Down the lane, it's deflected. Amino has the rebound. It's blocked by Wang. Fang Shu. And on the far side, Go Alin saying, let's calm down. And he takes the three. He misses it. It's in there, though. Block from behind. Foul is called. Ekpe Ude has his hand up. And Yi Jian Lian will go to the free throw line with a chance to make it a one-shot game with seven minutes to play. And real good decision there by Fang. He had a fast break, and all of a sudden, he pulls it out so that Yi can get into it. Off of the offensive rebound. Look at this move. Well, the crowd was giving a big ooh because they saw on the big screen a replay of that dunk, as you did, and then realized he's at the free throw line. He needs to make these. The first one is good. But the matchup of Diagu on Yi has been very tough, and Yi's taken advantage of it every time he's had the opportunity to go face up one-on-one. -on -one. 25 points. Oh, he's just struggling a little bit from the free throw line, though. Five of nine. China Three points between them. China in that zone again. Battling for position down low is uh, Diego and uh, Zhao Rui. Nigeria has so many dangerous penetrators. If they move the basketball, it would be their greatest advantage. China's thrilled the fact that they're just pounding the ball and moving it on the perimeter. Yi Jian Lian, he does look a bit tired, to be fair to him. But I don't think he's going to be sitting down for long. Kogi in the corner. Uzo. Udo. Udo drives, spins back the other way. Oh, it bounces off the iron. China with the rebound. Go Alun. Down the lane. It's blocked. Amino has it. Three on three. Amino still going. Drops it off. Oh, off the back of the iron. It looked like Ekbe didn't know if he wanted to lay it up or dunk it. Wong, trying to get it to Abdul Salam, it's pulled away from him. Uzo's out in front. Uzo drops it off, and it's thrown down with authority. 
Yeah. Nigeria lead by five. Great bake break. Big man running down the floor in Metu. They're fighting each other for the rebound there. Nigeria. Hogi coming up with it. Puts it on the floor, driving hard to the hole, and he will go to the line for two. China right now with four guards on the floor. They're concerned about the leak out and the breakup, so they're only sending one. And Josh Okogi, lucky here, drawing the contact, because I think he's got an opportunity to pull up and hit that jump shot. But this Nigeria team just keeps attacking the rim. Well, tell us how you feel. You don't need to. You can see in the pictures. China trailing by five, potentially seven with these two free throws. And once again, just as China get within shooting distance, Nigeria start to edge away. And this should be a technical timeout and that there'll be some instruction here. But a lot of this timeout is Yi getting a longer rest. He is coming back in. But they've got to find something in the last five and a half to get themselves back in front. They've spent most of the game behind. In this situation yesterday, Yi took over and Chao Rui stepped up big time for China. Good timeout. They bought him a little bit of rest right now. And he just got to leave it all on the line. But I do like the fact, if I'm Nigeria, I like the, I like the fact that they, we've got different players attacking the rim and we're not influenced by China's size up front. Kogi makes the first. There's a few Nigerian fans in the house. They're definitely the minority. But they might be the ones celebrating in five and a half minutes' time. Inside, Wong. He was challenged hard by Udo, but he survived that challenge and cuts it to five. Great call by Coach Lee Nan there. Popping Yi out for a three. Gave Wong a one-on-one -on -one inside. Oh, not quite off the back of the iron. He wants a foul. Kogi's not getting one. Son. Yi Jianlian again with the head fake. Up in the air, gets it to Wong, sends his man flying and lays it in for two. What great patience by Wong. Great defense by Wong. Better offense. Again, it's down to three. Every time they've got here, Nigeria have responded. Here comes Akogi trying to respond. Tipped off the ring. Goal 10. Goal 10. Basket will count. And the reason it was a goal 10 is because he got the rim. He made contact with the rim, I think, on that one. Yeah, he did. Good spot by the official. Here's the score at the other end. Look at the hard work. Look at the bodies moving on that. That was the great call after the timeout. Popping Yi. Five point lead, 4.20 to go. Nigeria looking to do the business here and deny Tunisia. Take the spot for the Olympics. Iran will get the Asian one if China can't come back. Yi Jian Lian. Oh, halfway down and back out again. And I can't believe Nigeria gave him that shot. 
Namdi Vincent along the baseline, kicks out. Kogi drives in, up in the air. Passes back out, and once again, Nigeria respond. Metu with the triple, and suddenly from three, it's eight. Great, great example of penetration reaction by Nigeria. That's a tough pass from Sun Min Wei. Eric is out in front. Can he catch the ball? Yes, he can. He lays it in, and in the blink of an eye, a three-point game is a ten-point game, and Nigeria are close here. You got someone ye size out there. You put a bounce pass in. You allow everybody to touch it. You put it up in the air. There's only a few people that can get it. Well, every time China have landed a glove on Nigeria, they've come back with a big hit themselves. Ye to the basket. Ball is loose. Who has it? I think that's going to be a foul on Wong. And it I is, 31. And Nigeria did a great job of trying to draw the charge. Don't know if his foot was in the circle, but people are laying it out there right now. Might well have been inside the uh, circle. Namdi Vince is slightly out of control, and he can't. Oh, stolen away by Eric, and Eric will monster slam! Nigeria by 12! Yeah, big break for Nigeria there. Vincent, a little reckless going down the middle, but when Yi gets the ball here, everybody's running away. Either if he's, he's looking to bust out with the dribble, if he sees somebody open, now they've got advantage because there's three Nigerian players poaching around him for the ball. Well, this has to be good here coming out of this timeout. They got three minutes to find something here. They gotta find a lot. Down 12. And now you know Nigeria is going to work real hard on Yi. Maybe come something out even with something like a gimmick. They're gonna deny him the basketball. Somebody else is gonna have to step up here for China. So again, a very small Chinese lineup out here, trying to be able to space the floor. And now Yi's playing the post by himself. What this does is if they run ball screen action with Yi, Nigeria is not going to switch on it, and they're not going to allow him to step outside for the three either. Jaurui wasn't sure that pass was going to get to Fang, but it does, and he hits the three. Three much needed points. Well, time very much the friend of Nigeria here. They need be in no rush. Long shot clock, Zamino driving through, trying to get it to Eric, and it's out of bounds. Yeah. Great play by Amino, tough decision on that pass. Just a little bit too much mustard on it. Again, throwing it where, he, where his teammate can't catch it. Well, we're into territory where China pretty much needs to score every time they have the ball. Abdul Salam for three all string back to back threes from China is down to six. Just said other people are going to have to step up and nobody's thinking about it. That's why you love when you got a pure shooter on the floor. They've got two. Fang knocking another one down here. Abdul Salam. This guy's going to catch it and shoot it every day. Well, Fang is now four of six. China as a whole, three, uh, seven of 17. We've got another timeout called. So while they're in this timeout, let me tell you what's happening. 
uh, around the FIBA Basketball World Cup. Argentina with a big win over Poland. 91-65 it finished in Group I. Both those two teams through to the quarterfinals. Spain up 12 on Serbia in Group J, 51-39. They're early in the third quarter there. Midway through the fourth, Iran 88, Philippines 62. So there will be no help for the Chinese if they don't win. Iran will take that spot. And at the minute, it looks like Nigeria is taking the African spot, unless China can do something about it, in which case Tunisia will step up into that role. Based on their last two possession, possessions, China's done a great job of using their size right now with the four guards on the floor to space the floor. Two to play. Nambi Vincent drives in. Oh, what a great finish with Yi right on top of him. This kid's confidence on offense is through the charts. Sung Min Wei. Abu Salam putting it on the floor. The whistle goes. They were hoping for an AM1. They'll have to settle for two free throws. But Namdi. So Salam here with, with the good tack here on the reversal. But Namdi Vincent driving early in the clock against the big. Tough decision. Well, these are must makes. 151 down eight. Got to make these two. But they have to get stops at the other end. At the minute, Nigeria seems to score every time they need one. Bit of full court pressure now. Kogi with it. Lob forward to Amino. They cross the timeline so they can take their time. Kogi, here's a whistle, throws it in. What a shot! Oh my goodness! Wow, did he make that read? A little bait there, knew where the player was, had the foul, sold it. There's just no need to grab his arm there. It's not a great defensive play, but a tremendous offensive one. And he converts the three-point play. And Nigeria getting closer and closer here. Nine points up, less than 100 seconds to play. Sungmin Rai gets it to Fang. They're looking for threes, China. It's tough to come. So they have to go inside to Yi off the glass. <laughs> I just wonder whether China go into foul mode here, because time is against them. Nigeria can run this down. Even a shot clock violation isn't the end of the world. Well, 14 seconds go, and then you give up the foul. Yeah, they were confused on direction on what they wanted to do there. If you're going to get it under 10, you might as well play the defensive series out. But even here, Mino does a great job making Yi take a tough shot. He's made a lot of them. He's got 27 points. How about Okogi in this fourth yeah, quarter? Yeah, he's been big. But the tough thing for China is that Nigeria's got five guys on the floor that can do a real good job of, of, of playing defense on the basketball, so it's hard to get yourself an advantage situation. So I mean, wait. Yijian Liang, it has to go in, it doesn't go in, and Nigeria are first to it, and they're having to foul. And one of the issues when you play a lineup that's non-traditional to their own game, China, in China's case with the four guards and Yi on the court, the ball's moving, 
but guys aren't moving off the basketball. Everybody's not. It's, it's not like you're having somebody screen for somebody else to get open. So you're pretty easy to guard on the perimeter. Well, the faces in and around the Chinese bench tell you all you need to know. Ten points down. Story's been every time China made a run, Nigeria responded. They might still get into the qualifying tournament, depending on how things pan out. So I mean, wait. Abdul Salam tipped off the ring by Eric. Great play. I think that had enough spin to go in, but Michael Eric would not allow it, and they're starting to celebrate on the Nigerian bench. Yeah, and Coach Nwara has gotten nothing but great contributions from his bench. I saw Nigeria play their first exhibition game in Canada. And you looked at the squad and just said, boy, there's a pile of athleticism. But they've done a good job of getting contributions from everybody in it. Particularly tonight. Eleven guys on the floor. Ten of them have scored. Well, Yi Jin Liam will sit down. His name echoing around the arena, but he trudges off having scored 27 because he knows the bigger picture. Feng Shaw off the mark, rebound Nigeria, time ticking away, and it can't tick quickly enough for Nigeria as they close in on a big victory. And to be fair, they've led for most of this game. China got on top early on, but they got ahead. And every time the Chinese came at them, they had a response. They'll take the 24-second violation. They're not bothered. Over 9,000 people in here. It's totally ram-packed, but they have not seen the result they wanted to. And they will go home disappointed. As time expires, Nigeria can celebrate a big victory. And they thoroughly deserved it, Joe. Absolutely. They came in here with a plan. They stuck to their plan. They got incredible contributions from their entire team. Played all 11 players in the first half. And their contributions, guys came off the bench, did a great job. But at the end, you got Aminu. You got Meadow, and you've got Kogi, who's been who's outstanding to finish this game. Well, Tunisia top Group N, but Nigeria have now topped Group M, and they've done so with a better basket difference by a country mile. So they will be the number one African team at this FIBA Basketball World Cup, and therefore they will claim that berth in next summer's Tokyo Olympics. An incredible feat for Nigeria. And came down to this stretch and played very, very well. And that's a team win. That's, that's maybe the best part of this. Well, you see the disconsolation on Yu Jan Lian and his teammates' faces as they head off. Now, but out on court, they're hugging each other, they're celebrating, they're waving to the crowd and thanking for the support, the Nigerians. They are very, very happy indeed. And again, they came here. They wanted to get through to the second round. That didn't happen. When it doesn't happen, you then have to change your goal. They changed their goal, and they met the goal they changed it to. And that's, and that's great coaching. That's great coaching because that emotional letdown, they felt that they were going to the second round, and they were going in through a front door. They were going to claim their Olympic berth, but they weren't here for the Olympic berth. They were here to, for the World Cup. But then they had to step back 
and a lot of these professionals stepped up. And some of these young guys really stepped up. Great coaching job by Coach Nawara. And that's the thing. You look at this. Top scorer, Kogi, with 16 points. They've got 86 on the board. The top scorer has 16 points. That tells you they got contributions all down the lineup. Yeah, I go back. Everybody put up a crooked number. Everybody contributed in some way or another here. And everybody can feel a great part of it. What a way to go to the Olympics. 11 guys contributing, winning your way in. Well, there's Yi Jianlian. His name's still echoing a little bit around the arena, but it's the Nigerians who are celebrating, and well, they might. A tremendous 40-minute game from them. They got a little bit of pressure early on. China had that early lead led by 17-10. Uh, it was uh, in the first quarter. But once they had that little run and got on top of things, they never quite looked um, uncomfortable, did they? There was a couple of spells where China would hit a couple of shots, get it down to three or four, but then they responded with big play after big play. But their athleticism is off the charts at every position. Like, check that out by Koye. Here's a shooter, guy knocking 75% in this tournament, and he goes, he uses that to his advantage to go baseline. Well, it's the uh, end of action in Guangzhou for the FIBA Basketball World Cup. And what a spectacular end in terms of big plays, three-point shots, dunks, block shots. It wasn't the result that the 9,000, it was 9,100 and something people in here, probably 9,050 of them have come to see the different result, but they saw an amazing game of basketball even though they didn't get the result they wanted. To think this was supposed to be a classification game. This became a birth to the Olympics and Nigeria winning it in China against China with plays like that. Well, it's been a tremendous uh, nine or ten days here in Guangzhou. The city has been very welcoming and have thoroughly enjoyed their basketball. They've got behind all the games, even before China came here. The crowds were big. They enjoyed the games. We've had some fantastic games of basketball here, some real close ones, some come-from-behind wins, all sorts of things uh, going on. And they've certainly enjoyed themselves here in Guangzhou and uh, they will be watching as the tournament moves uh, after tomorrow into the quarterfinal phases still a few more things to iron out in the second round and the classification tomorrow and then on Tuesday the quarterfinals start as the last eight teams look to make it all the way to the final in Beijing. Well, I've enjoyed watching these games. I've enjoyed working with you, and we've been fortunate because we've had some thrillers in this gym over these last 10 days. We certainly have, and for atmosphere tonight was probably the most raucous it's been with the Chinese team here, and they, got, they knew the size of the game, the fans, they got right behind their team from the end, from the start to the end. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough and it was Nigeria who were flexing when the final buzzer sounded. Yeah. The amount of pressure on that man today was incredible. Well, he gave it everything he had. 27 points, the game's leading scorer by some distance, but not enough. Nigeria, with uh, contributions all the way down the stat sheet, have won this game, and in doing so, they will finish top of classification group M. Confirmation of today's results means Nigeria won, China two, Korea three, and Cote d'Ivoire finish in fourth place in group M. And that will do it for Guangzhou at this FIBA Basketball World Cup. It's been a fantastic 10 days or so, uh, but it comes to an end here. Make sure you keep up to date with all the other games. For Joe, I'm Daniel. We'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.